now you have more responsibility. How's that been for you? It's been great. It's been great. Obviously, we miss Leon. Uh, just talked to him this morning. Uh, but the opportunity to help out with uh, AD and the defensive line has been good. Uh, I think the guys are playing hard. Um, you know, we're pretty happy with where we're at right now and looking forward to a little time off and then get right back to it. What do you feel like is, is your number one, like most important, most important part of your job? Uh, I, as I've said before, it's kind of like jazz. It's unscripted every day. Um, uh, the most important to me, I guess, is just really overseeing where we are as a team collectively, uh, how we go about our daily approach to just trying to win a football game. Uh, when we came here last year, Coach McCarthy had a plan in mind, uh, some things that we had implemented up in Green Bay that we had had success, and that was a big part of the locker room culture and establishing the professionalism that we were looking for from the guys in the locker room. Uh, and so I think we're getting to that place uh, Obviously, having your quarterback back helps us get there, uh, but really just trying to help the guys see the, the most important part of this opportunity is just being a pro. Talk about the mental culture. You seem like, you seem like the players talk about the chemistry in the room. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're seeing with this team? Is that they like each other and they like playing with each other? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when you come into this thing, you got so many different people from different places. Uh, so what Coach was able to do is just set a format in place as to what he was looking for, trying to get the guys aligned on the same page, uh, and just go about attacking every day. Uh, we know what the expectations are down here, and I think they're the same at all 32 clubs. And really the guys have taken to what it is we're trying to lay down as a foundation. And, you know, it's working for us right now. How do you set a format to great coach? I guess I'm asking. How do you do that? Well, first and foremost, you have to have clear expectations and to get the buy-in from the players uh, and then hold them accountable to those things. Uh, and the great part about it is, is the players start to feel it and they hold each other accountable. And then as coaches, we can just kind of step back and just watch it take place from there. Uh, but, you know, culture isn't built overnight. It can certainly be stripped down overnight. Getting the right guys in the locker room. We've had a couple good draft classes. We've had some free agent signings. So and it's, it's a continuous process. How much does it help you to have Dak Prescott on the roster? Well, a guy like Dak Prescott, dynamic young leader, he, he, he believes in it. Um, and all of the kids want the same thing. You know, everybody wants the same thing from the owner to the coaches. Uh, to the players. Everybody wants to have success. We want to try to win a championship. And so everybody is looking to do what they can do from their perspective, their part, to try to help us win. It's a collective effort, all, you know, from the players to the coaches, support staff. Everybody is just getting the line, trying to see what we can do each and every Sunday. You have a lot of young guys on this team who are contributing. How do you guide them and say, this is how to be a pro? And obviously, you have veterans who, who do know how to be a pro. Well, you know, the first and foremost, you know, everybody shows up knowing how to play football when they come to the NFL. Uh, they just never been pro football players. So what we try to do is help them become better pro football players. Uh, and that's, that's not the X's and O's. It's the off the field expectations. It's taking care of your finances. How do you develop time management? A lot of times this is guys' first job. And so they don't even know what it's like to have a job. And so just really trying to teach them the game within the game. And I think that's been a big part of what we've had some success with. Well, we've had a lot of hurdles uh, since we got here, the pandemic, the loss of certain key players, obviously Marcus's death. Uh, a lot of the players have experienced death in life, whether it be a family member or friend. And what we did was just lean on each other. You know, sometimes we ask why, but we don't always get answers to why certain things happen in life. And we just supported each other. Uh, we try to keep our messaging consistent. Uh, you know, what Marcus would have wanted us to do and just really just try to go out there and put a good product on the field and try to win a game. Um, didn't have as many wins as we wanted last year, but that was then. Uh, really happy with where we are right now. But, you know, collectively, I just think it's just really guys supporting each other, you know, loving one another and just coming out here. We understand we have something special. We got some good players in the locker room, and it's showing right now. Can I tell you about the maturity of that locker room? Even though some of those guys are not, are not here, obviously, mm -hmm. the guys you still have, they kind of, I'm sure they kind of handle that. 
you know, maybe when they got home, they, they dealt with it a different way. Mm -hmm. you understand the yeah, and you know, sometimes we have no other choice, right? We, we have no other choice, right? It's the job at hand. It was the job we were all hired to do. Uh, we can waddle in our pity, but that's not going to change what happened to Marcus. Um, and so collectively, it was just, it's about just taking the next steps. And, you know, with Coach McCarthy as our leader, uh, he's very clear in his messaging as to what he wants for the team, how we go about it. Uh, he's had success. Um, and, and, and that's what he wants to have down here. And so everybody's pulling in the same direction. Uh, our coaches, the cohesiveness that we're establishing amongst our staff is spilling over into the locker room with the players. We've hired some dynamic teachers, uh, great communicators, guys that are relatable. Uh, we have a diverse staff. And so we're, we're here in a lot of different capacities to try to help these young men reach their ultimate goal, which is a team goal to win in championship. Oh, well, there's a lot of things I like about working with Coach McCarthy. Uh, you know, when he came to Green Bay, he was a 39-year-old first-time head coach. Uh, I, had, I had met him in 1995 when he was quarterback coach with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, and then he came on to be our head coach in Green Bay. Just his organizational skills, I, I think he hires good people. Um, he's not a micromanager. He's, he, he allows you to do your job. He feels like if I have to come down and do your job, perhaps I've hired the wrong person. Uh, he's very much in tune with the culture uh, from having gone through his Kansas City days, San Francisco days, and then obviously in Green Bay. You know, Lou Holt said it best, I think, you're a better coach with better players, and we have some pretty good players down here right now. You were out of the game for a little bit. What did he do to, to bring you back? Because I'm assuming you were comfortable where you were, and then I don't know if football is like, oh, man, I just got to. No, nah, not, not, not so much that. Uh, when I walked away from the game, I wanted a new challenge and an opportunity. Uh, when Coach McCarthy got this opportunity down here, he asked me about coming down here with him, trying to create what we were able to create in Green Bay. And uh, it was something that I said, you know what, I, you know, to have an opportunity to work for the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers in a lifetime was too much to pass up. And so um, I was more than willing to come down with them and try to implement the things that we had done that was successful for us up there. And I think it's starting to take shape. Yes, sir. Well, all of my siblings still live there. Uh, I've been in Green Bay for the last 24 years, so Green Bay is really home. Uh, and guys tend to make fun of me about that. They say, Rob, you're not from D.C. anymore. You're from Green Bay uh, since I've only spent 18 years in D.C. and 24, I guess, in Green Bay. Uh, but, you know, my family's still there. You know, still, still a lot of pleasant memories growing up in D.C. Uh, Love the foundation that the city gave me. Uh, now that I'm older in years, I can truly respect some of the things that I experienced, some the good and the bad there. Uh, I was in D.C. growing up at a time where it wasn't a great place that you see right now. And some of the adversity that I personally faced there through, throughout my lifetime with my family, all those were teachable moments for me. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's home. Everything makes you stronger. Yeah, yeah, it won't break, what won't break you will, will make you stronger. You know, I've always been a guy, you know, I just try to play the hand that I was dealt. A lot of times we can't really always pick the hand that we want to play out, you know, and so you just try to say, hey, you're not the only person going through this. When you think life is tough for you, somebody probably has it tougher. Um, and so I've just tried to answer the door of every opportunity that I was offered. Sometimes being an inner city kid growing up, you don't get those opportunities or the knock isn't loud enough for you to hear it. Um, I've just been a guy that's always just tried to take advantage of whatever opportunity was presented to me, whether it's been academically, professionally, uh, through football. Um, you know, I'm self-driven, just try to go out and do the best I can. Uh, because they could have chose anybody in the world to do the things that we do, but they chose me, and for that I've always been grateful.